Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 505 and holy smokes artichokes, this one is a doozy. This one is a oh wow, uh, oh my gosh, are you kidding me technique based class. I, I'm gonna tell you, we're, we're, we're forgetting that there's fine art and paper crafters. We're gonna forget all about that. Right now, today, we are all just creators. We're makers. Doesn't matter that maybe we do cards, and it doesn't matter that maybe we do fine art watercoloring. Today, we are going to take both worlds and we are going to blend them into magic. And everything I do today, everything I do is going to be achievable by every level of crafter, even the newbies, even you who guys who are just tuning in for the first time going, well, I have some free time on my hands and I thought it would be fun to make some cards. You're going to be able to do this. <laughs> and then those of you who have been crafting like me since like dirt, you know, then you're going to take what I'm showing you today and you're going to expand it into something even more than I dreamed of. So I have, I have fine art and I have paper crafting and the two worlds are going to blend seamlessly into stunning. There's a story, actually there's a couple stories behind some of the product that I got. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy. I'm gonna tell you, it wasn't easy to get some of these products I got. But before I do that, let me do winner winner chicken dinner from last YouTube, which it was 504. Wahoo Kachoo. So these, oh, I know that name. Oh, I know both these names. So these two people were kind enough to place a comment below. See it below me? Look below me, there's a place to put a comment. And they wrote something that I could approve. Well, actually, SMS guy James could approve. And that made them go into the running for a winner, winner chicken dinner. And they're going to get a $25 gift card in their online account to spend any way that they want. Now, if you want a chance to be a winner, winner chicken dinner, it's so super easy. Look down. <laughs> Below me. There's a place to leave a comment. Please note that your comment will not be approved immediately, so you won't see it immediately. SMS guy James approves most of the comments, I think on Wednesdays is usually when he does it. And as long as you write something polite, it'll get approved. Doesn't have to be about me, doesn't have to be about the class, doesn't have to be about the manufacturers. It can be something as simple as, I had a great day today. Send, that'll do, that'll do. <laughs> Once we get your comment, then you go into the running to win $25, and we do two every single week. That's kind of exciting. Everybody loves free money, right? I mean, come on, yay. Now, our winner winners from last week, they posted their comments. Please remember, if you're watching this during the premiere, she's like, why is she doing this? If you're watching this during the premiere, we are live chatting over here. So if you see a live chat going on, the live chat comments do not count. Your comment in the live chat is not does not go into the running to be a winner winner chicken dinner. You have to look below. And if you are watching this and you don't see a live chat going on, well, premiere already happened. We missed you. Come 8 a.m. Sunday California time, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, or 4 p.m. in the United Kingdom every Saturday and join the live chat. We have so much fun and so many people have, have made such close friendships. Even though they might not ever physically meet each other, the friendships that have been made on our live chat is amazing. We have an amazing community on our live chat and there is there is always room for one more. I'm thinking of Disneyland and, and the Haunted Mansion. There's 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 always room for one more at the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> okay, so winner winner chicken dinner from last week is our first one is Kay Hawkman. Hello Kay, how are you doing today? Congratulations to you. I am very excited for you. Wahoo Kachu, you've got $25 in your online account. The check mark is there. That means it should be there, assuming we actually hit save. <laughs> Sometimes we put the $25 in the account and we forget to hit the save button. Hmm, hopefully that's done. But if not, don't worry, we'll get it taken care of. Our second winner winner is Peggy. Hello, Peggy Linder. How are you doing today, Peggy? You are a winner winner chicken dinner. Congratulations. I can't wait to, I'm sure you're going, ah! <laughs> and I'm sure everybody's going to be um, congratulating you. So congratulations to, to Peggy and to Kay. 
Maybe you are stopping this video and rewinding it and calling your spouse in, or maybe you called your fur babies in, or maybe, maybe you just, ah! <laughs> but it's time to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? Peggy and Kay, you need to stand up and do it. I am not doing this on my own, no. And I can't stand up because I am my own camera person. So <laughs> I gotta keep the camera. I, I can do my camera down and I can do it up. That's as far as I've gotten with it. <laughs> All right, okay, are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to both of you. I'm very excited for both of you. I hope I hope you find something that will make your heart happy because that makes our heart happy. Um, today, just a little while ago, we had a customer come in. She is here from Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii. I should have told her that. I think her name was Sally. I think it's Sally. And uh, she was here on, on business. It's not that she came just for scrapbooking made simple. No, <laughs> but she got close enough to drive. She rented a car and drove from Long Beach. Bless her pea picking heart. She said she survived the I-5. Yes, she did. So she was in today and we had a lovely conversation. I probably talked too much because, well, it's me and I talk a lot. And I found out that she, we had met prior at a trade show and I'm like well how you know what were you doing at the trade show and she teaches at a senior center she teaches crafting at a senior center well let me tell you we had just gone through some of the, um, the some of the stock room upstairs and found some product that we no longer carry we're not gonna put it on the website that it just takes too much time for onesies uh, and so we were going to mark them as free gifts. And I looked at Claire and I said, well, at first I looked at Sally and I said, do you have room in your suitcase? And she said, well, yes. And I said, okay, because you teach at a senior center and she teaches up to 60 people, 12 at a time. Oh my gosh. We loaded her up with so much stuff. I hope we loaded her up. I know that they were pulling out. I know what they were pulling out. <laughs> and hopefully she's able to get it in her suitcase and utilize it at the senior center. What, what a great thing to do. Now she has a whole nother professional job going on, but just the fact that she, because we have an employee here who works part-time at the senior center and we donate to the senior center. And so we just, uh, Sally, I hope if you're watching this, I hope, and gosh, if I don't have your name right, forgive me. But if you're watching this, I hope that, that your seniors make fabulous, wonderful things with what you brought back and that they just enjoy their time with you. That would make our heart happy. So, so for those of the two of you who have just won $25, it's all about yay. <laughs> it's about yay and finding something that, that will maybe inspire you to try something you haven't done before. Maybe buy something that you've always been curious about, but just couldn't bring yourself to buy. Get it now, it's on the house. <laughs> okay, so today, what do I have for you today? Well, we're going to take a little bit, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna mix fine art, fine art with paper crafting, you like my air quotes. Fine art really isn't about a talent level. It isn't. Yes, there are people who are considered fine artists, and I, I understand that. But when you're talking about fine art products, that's a fine artist. <laughs> I'm talking about fine art products. I'm not talking about fine artists. Yes, there are people who are known as a fine artist in their talent level, they have more talent in their pinky than I have in my entire body. But I'm talking about product. And when you're talking about fine art product, you're not talking about the talent level of the person using it. You're talking about the quality of the product that you're using. And we in the paper crafting world sometimes think that, well, we can't use fine art products, but why not? They're amazing. In fact, sometimes they're better than what, well, often, most of the time, they're better than what we find in the paper crafting world and they're less money. Don't ask me why, I have no clue, but they're less money. So today, today it's about taking those two worlds and making them collide. 
and I'm going to show you some product and then I'm going to talk to you about the product and then we're going to get into the class because I need you to understand why I do what I do sometimes and <laughs> And there's definitely a story. So I'm gonna tilt down, we're gonna get started. Like I said, I'm gonna show you some of the products I'm using today. I'm going to explain them to you. We're gonna talk a little bit, and then we're gonna do nothing but play. And if you are a newbie crafter, please stay tuned because you are going to be able to do everything I do. Everything, even if you're like, I haven't, I haven't ever done anything. Well, this is a good time to start because you are going to be successful in this in this endeavor in in today's class you're going to be successful the very first time I, I mean it I promise you I say that from my heart you've got this and when you see the look on the face of the people you either make that card for or make a bookmark for whatever you're going to do the look on their face is just the most amazing it's it's like the look on the face when when i get to do winner winner chicken dinner and it and somebody walks in and says i was a winner winner chicken dinner i get to see the look on their face and it is amazing so i'm going to tilt down we're going to get started i have creative expressions i have chow bella i have sizzix i have yasutomo and i have van gogh paints available at royal talons let's get started all right, so down I go. And they're like, my gosh, that woman talks a lot. I know, but you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna, it's who I am. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start with this. There is a story behind this and what is inside of this is very, very, very special. This is from Yasutomo which is a Japanese company. They are here based luckily in California. We buy our nori paste from them when we are doing uh, washi or rice paper. But I saw these, well, actually I didn't see them. Some of my peeps played with them and literally lost their minds. You're like, they're paintbrushes, Stacy. Oh yes, but there's so much more than paint brushes. So these are their fusion brushes. And these are wildly popular and extremely hard to come by. And I'm gonna tell you why they're a little hard to come by. There are five different brushes. These, are, these have been used, these are loved. They're watercolor brushes. And you're thinking, well, why do I need watercolor brushes? First off, their fusion brushes are meant to mimic a fine Japanese watercolor brush. And this brush, if this was a, a fine Japanese watercolor brush, could be $30, $40, $50. They're not inexpensive. But Yasutomo, a Japanese company, found a way to make a synthetic bristle, a synthetic brush, behave so similar to those super high-end Japanese watercolor brushes. And again, they're called Fusion. There are five sizes, one, two, three, four, five. That way you start with the biggest and they go all the way down to look at this little guy. Now, why? what makes them so special? It, it's not just the bristles. It's how much water they hold and how much paint they hold when you load them. It's the laying down of the paint. It's the, it's, they're just yummy. So I brought them in, well, I, well, okay. So I'm not gonna put the lids back on. So there's five sizes. We are only selling it as an I want it all. So if these were Japanese, true Japanese watercolor brushes, this set could easily be, you know, 60, you know, 60 to, no, probably more than that, probably 80 to $100. And then this bamboo holder. And I had to question, well, why the bamboo holder? And, and they explained, this is also from Yasutomo. They explained to me that the bamboo holder allows you to roll it up and 
So you, I would not put, once the, once the caps are off, don't try and put the caps back on. See, this one hasn't come off yet. Once they're off, don't try and put your lids back on. Keep your brushes without the lids. Just toss those lids away. So the, ba the bamboo carrier lets you roll it up to a nice compact size. It's a traditional carrier for your watercolor brushes and it allows them to have ventilation to dry because the bamboo is woven. It has holes and the bamboo absorbs the water and it allows your brushes to naturally dry. And you can just lay them out and then you roll it around and it's got this little, this little key here kind of like thing and you slip it right down and close it up. Okay, so going forward at Scrapbooking Made Simple and for as long as I can, these will be the brushes I use when I do any kind of water coloring or painting with anything that is not acrylic. These are not made for acrylic paints. Please don't take a, a beautiful brush and use them with acrylics. If you want a palette paint with these, if you want a watercolor paint, it, it, whatever, however you're going to watercolor, these are going to make your life lovely. They're a better brush than anything I've ever had, ever. Now, let me tilt on up and tell you the story. And you're like, really? Can't we just get to it? No, we can't, uh, hello? Okay, so I'm at Napta Creativation earlier this year, and I'm at the Yasutomo booth, and I know Yasutomo, we're friends. Hello, hi everybody, hi Wendy, hi everybody. We're friends, we know each other, and they're kind of showing me what's new, and there's a table of demos going on and a make and take, and they are using these brushes, and all I hear, I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm supposed to be looking at, but all I hear is, oh, Ah, oh my, this is wonderful. When can we get these? So of course, I'm a retailer. Hello, I, I wanted to know what what's going on behind me. What are they working on? What are they doing that is causing them to <gasps> catch their breath? And Wendy's like, well, these are our new fusion brushes. And I'm like, well, fusion brushes, what are those? And she explained them to me, how it is a synthetic brush based off of and made to behave like a fine Japanese watercolor brush, but made affordable. I said, me being me, I know what brushes cost. How affordable is affordable? She told me in my eyes, I went, really? She said, yes. And I said, awesome. How many do you have? And she told me, and I said, I'll take them all. She's like, what? And I said, I want the carrier too. <laughs> I'll take them all. And she said, I'm sorry, what? I said, I'd like all five brushes and the carrier. We're going to take your entire inventory. And Wendy looked at me like, one moment, please. I'll be right back. So she scurries away and I, because these are new, these are new and everybody was in love with them, but I had to have them. I wanted them. <laughs> So she scurries away and she goes and talks to the owner of, uh, of Yasutomo or the, the, I don't know, your CEO out here. And she comes back and, and I said, Wendy, is there a problem? And she said, well, you want all of them. And I said, I do. I want all of them. And she said, but, but well, you want all of them? And I said, yes. So at that point, the, the manufacturer's rep for Yasutomo came over, Kim, and she said, how's it going? And I said, great, Kim, I want all of these brushes and the carrier. And she said, huh. So then she scurries over and talks to, talks to the CEO of Yasutomo here. And, and it took like a half an hour of back and forth negotiation. And I just stood there and I'm like, yeah, we want them all. So then as I saw that it was getting a little tense, cause it was getting a little tense, I said, okay, what if we back off and I leave you a hundred of everything? That way you can fill the orders you've already taken. And Wendy's like, 
but it'll take me it'll take me months to get them back in stock we we brought in what we thought we were gonna need for several months and then the the boat is leaving from Japan and it'll get here in several months and and then we'll have more and I said great so let's let's leave you a couple you know let's leave you a hundred to fill all the orders you have I'll take the balance and then when the boat comes in they'll be back in stock that'll be wonderful and so it like I said it, it took it took a little while and I did I did we did negotiate to leave some behind so other retailers could have them I didn't take all of them I left a a nice chunk um, available to everybody else but I can tell you that these are difficult to find these brushes are that good everybody who touched them saw them played with them wanted them it wasn't like a oh these are nice maybe I'll think about it it was like I want them so me being me I put my money where my mouth is and I said I'll take them now and I'll write you a check because we don't do credit cards we pay for everything we just we just pay for it. I said write the order I'll pay you and we'll have them shipped right away they can ship immediately so <laughs> I know that there are some distributors out there fine art distributors who are waiting for these brushes you can get them at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. <laughs> I wanted you to have them. I wanted my customers to have them. And so that is my story about these brushes. I hope you love them as much as everybody else has. Again, they are only sold in the I Want It All bundle. The I Want It All bundle retails with the, with the carrier. They retail for $34.06. We're putting them on sale for $26.99. We've already bagged. We had to do all the bagging, the tagging. We had to do it all. <laughs> I was happy to do it all. So I'm going to be playing with these today. Then there's another product. Same issue about eight aisle or eight booths down. Are you ready? I'm going to show you that product too. And then I'm going to tell you about it. I told you I had talking to do. I can't help myself. When I want something, am I, am I, I'm pleasantly aggressive <laughs> in my negotiating skills. Okay, so I walk down to the Royal Talons booth. I walk down to the Royal Talons booth. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Hi, Kyle. <laughs> Hi, everybody, Royal Talons. And Mary's like, look at these, they're so cute. And I'm like, okay, what are they? She said, well, they're the new Van Gogh, the new Van Gogh starter set. And I said, oh, they're, they're the watercolors? And she said, yes. And she said, it's the, it's the, um, what do they call this? The mixing set where you get five colors. And okay, theoretically from these five colors, you should be able to make every color in the spectrum. Let's be real, it's me, I can't do that. So I said, gosh, they're awful cute. And she sat me down and we're talking about them. And uh, let me pull it out. And it has the primary mixing and some information about that. And we open it up and it's just, just darling. The box is just darling. And inside are the five Van Gogh colors and seven empty pans. And then you've got six wells up here to mix and this cute little thing I'm a bob. This, now mind you, it's a beginning set, but this is a paintbrush so that you can travel with you. What I like most about this little paintbrush isn't necessarily the paintbrush, but see, I can't get it back in. There we go. I like this little, little, little doodad. Do you see this little doodad? It's like this little cup at the end because it allows you to get in and pull your little pans out. Anybody who has watercolors in these little pans, it's always difficult to get them out. Now, Yasutomo also has watercolors very similar to this. And I had to go back and forth and, and, and there was some discussion about which ones I loved, but I love the Van Gogh. Van Goghs are a fine art quality watercolor paint. There's five pans in here and each of these pans run about, about $5 each. So when I sat down and Mary was showing me this, I'm like, so how much is this if these are five bucks each? 
And she said, well, maybe 475. And she said, well, it's kind of like getting the case for free, which is another $12. So you're kind of buying these five pans and then getting the case for free. And I just thought it was so cute and so clever. And I loved the starting kit. And I said, okay, how many did you, how many are on their way over? And when she told me, when she told me, I said the same thing. I'll take them all. She said, what? <laughs> I said, deja vu. <laughs> Just had this conversation like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I said, I'll take them all because they don't have a lot. I can't do a YouTube class if I only have 20 of something. I just can't. I have to have at least some to be able to offer you or at least know that you're going to be able to find them someplace else. I bought them all. I don't know that you're going to find these anyplace else right now. I know that there are more on the way in. They're on a container and the container is due here, I guess maybe in the next month or so, but I bought them all. So, so I was playing with them and I said, well, how many colors of Van Gogh watercolor paint are there? And she's like, oh my gosh, I wanna say maybe a maybe 100. And I'm like, oh, I can't do 100, that's too many. I said, but I wanna be able to offer more than the five well, there goes one of my pants. I want to offer more than the five just in case you guys want to fill up the rest of the, the, the container here, you know, your store, your little unit. So let me tilt on down again. I know back and forth and back and forth, but that's okay. I had so much fun at the show. Oh my gosh. I spent so much money at the show, <laughs> but that's what I'm supposed to do. That's my job. Find really amazing things and then buy it. So I wanted to have, offer a few more colors so that if you wanted to have a full set, you could, or at least fill up your, your little container. But then I thought to myself, okay, I can't, I can't just offer seven more colors. What if you don't like the seven colors that I pick? So I picked an additional 19 colors. You're gonna get the five in the container with the little, the little tool thing is the best thing ever. This little tool thing is like, it's awesome. Even if you have somebody else's watercolors, that little tool thing, because most of the time they're in this metal pan where they're a little harder to get out. This is really nice. Anyway, I picked out 19 more colors. So then I'm thinking, well, if I pick out 19 more colors, I need to be, off, be able to offer another container because now I've brought in enough color that you could do two containers. Because <laughs> I didn't want to only offer you seven colors and say that's all you have to choose from. So you're going to get the five and then there's an additional 19 other colors. But what if somebody wanted all 19 colors? Then they don't have a storage unit to put it in. So we bought the empty storage units as well. I'm telling you, this was a whole thing. Now these are mine and they're loved. These are the ones I've been using. Here's the five colors that come with it. And then I have filled in with seven additional colors. And here's the balance of the 19 colors. So you're able to pick and choose. If you wanna add seven more colors, you've got 19 colors to choose from. And if you pick, you know, I don't know, 12 colors, well, then you can start your next, pan, your next container and slowly add to it. They're wonderful. I'll tell you, on sale, the little pans, and again, these are fine art product. The little pans at our sale price are under $4. $4, under $4 for, for the little pans. It's amazing. They are such high pigmented quality product. They are so light fast. You use so little. These should last you such a long time, but I needed to show them to you and explain that if you go looking for, especially this one, you, you'll be able to find this one, I think, although I think I might have bought all of those too. You might have a difficult time finding this one for just a little while until their next shipment comes in. Right now, these are here, they've landed, they got, they arrived a little bit earlier than um, we expected and I didn't want them to hold them, so I said, ship them, ship them. And we paid for them, wahoo ka -choo. So now I have got two products that would come from a fine art world that have made their way to 
paper crafters because we want to work with the best products too. We want to work with the quality product that is going to give us the best result from the start. That's really where better product comes into play when it's actually easier to use better product when you are inexperienced because it gives you a better result from the beginning. And as you grow into your your comfort level with the different products that you're using, different as you grow into your techniques, then they just become better and better and better. So I've paired these up with a couple products from a few paper crafting manufacturers. And now, now I do think I'm going to start. Please know we have only so many of the brushes and we have only so many of the Van Gogh watercolors. You may have, whoa, you may have watercolors that you love, 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 and that is great. Use them, absolutely. If you have not bought watercolors in a, in a pan type like this, you will find that Van Gogh is going to, they're going to be really, really good. You'll be able to see the difference in the pigment. You'll be able to see how much paint it takes to get the same results. The Van Gogh, you'll use this much. Somebody else, you might have to use this much because the pigment level isn't the same. All paints are not created equal. All brushes are not created equal. All stamps are not the same. All stencils, there's different qualities of all products. Acrylic paints, I'm using the Sizzix acrylic paints today. They're beautiful, they're creamy, they're lush. Are they from the fine art world? No, but they are a quality product. So I'm gonna leave it up to you. We are gonna play today. I'm gonna tilt down, I'm gonna get started. Thank you for letting me talk to you and explain to you why we are the way we are. And yes, for those manufacturers who know me and love me, yes, I want what I want. I want to bring it to my customers. I want them to have the very, very best. I want to represent your product in the best way that I can, all while knowing that, that, that I'm, I'm teaching somebody how to maybe grow just a little bit more than, than outside their box. Just, just expand their horizons just a little bit. So if I'm a little aggressive when I say I want it all, you love me though, right? Manufacturers, right? Right, Yasutomo, <laughs> Royal Talents, Kyle, Wendy, everybody. I promise, I promise, I will do right by, I will do right by you and I will do right by our customers. And that's the most important thing to me is making sure that, that the quality of the product we bring you is everything I say it's going to be. All right, down we go. Okay, let's get started for today. Let me zoom on in. Don't know how many of you are still with me, but you know what? I have to be honest. I have to tell you, I can't just, you got to know why it is it is. So I think today we're going to start, and I know I'm going to be using for the most, I think for today, well, I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull them all out. We're going to start with perhaps some stamps, and I'm going to keep the beginning, I'm going to keep it super simple because really, I just want to, I've got four stamps from Creative Expressions. Four stamps from Creative Expressions. And I'm going to show you how the watercolors work. But really, where the magic happens is when we, oh, this is a whole nother story. <laughs> okay. So, imagine that the story I just told you for the paints and the brushes are also for this paper. This paper is magic. It's unique, it's different, it's washi paper, it's a high quality Japanese art paper. I, I, bought, I, I bought it all, I did the same thing here, Yasutomo, Wendy, everybody there is like, what? Yes, I bought it all and even then it's very limited is how much I have, but we're gonna be playing with this. But before I get there, I'm gonna just start with some basic watercoloring. So I'm gonna open up one of my palettes and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spray. And that's just to kind of 
prime the the watercolor I want to you know because once they're dry they're hard as a rock when they're dry so I want to give them a little bit of a spray just so they have a moment to start to loosen up and bloom I think bloom is the correct terminology and if not somebody will let me know and I'm going to pull out my stamp from creative expressions this is a rubber stamp so it's nicely etched beautifully detailed see if we peel off the lining and this is what's going to stick to your block because of the stamp the way it is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp upside down and I'm gonna grab my color pad which is a jacquard product also out of the fine art industry and making their kind of debut into the paper crafting world with their dye basting well their their pigment based inks or what I have right now and then they're white and they're black jacquard also came out of the fine art world for us where we didn't know anything about them and I love Asher and the pigment inks that we brought with the better press we're going to be expanding on that I've got the last four colors of their metallic pigment inks to go with my next better press class okay so I think that up pretty good and this is a waterproof dye based ink, which means that you can get it wet and it's not going to run. I'm going to give a nice little press. I'm just going to do it upside down. Now, I haven't stamped with this yet, so we're going to see how good I do. I haven't primed the stamp at all, so usually I'll stamp off. Now I'm just going to give it a nice rub. If you have a stamp positioner, by all means use that. For me, with a larger stamp so I don't get holes, it's just as easy to flip it upside down. Oh, and I've got two pieces of paper here. Oh, I think that's actually a very good image for a first stamp. I don't think I'm going to do, I don't think I'm going to mess with that. I think I'm just going to let it be. Okay, I'm going to clean my stamp a little bit. And... The ink may stain the stamp, that's going to be okay. Once you clean it, it's fine. If you put a red on top of it and stamp, you're not going to get the black. It's not a, it's not an issue at all. So now I've got my I've got my stamped image and I'm going to go in and watercolor. This is where I'm going to use some of the smaller brushes, I think. And I love the brushes. They also have a little hangy at the top, which is also very traditional in Japanese brushes in case you want to hang your brushes to dry. Very traditional. Now I'm going to add a little more water to it and I might put a little water in my little pans there and I'm going to pick up a color and let's see, let's go, let's go here and I'm going to put a little bit of that color here and then I'm going to add some water. So do you see how intense that, oh, I just got color on me. Do you see how intense that color is? I literally went like this and in here. And because they're so pigmented, I can dilute this color a lot and still have it very strong. Let's grab a piece of paper before I color this. So if I were to just pick up color and not do any water, First off, my brush is fully loaded. Look at how much paint I get on my brush. But then I've mixed in with some water here. So then I can tone and I can add more water. And the more water I add, the more of a gradation I'm going to get. And I can add more water. It takes such a tiny amount of paint to 
to make your blends and they're beautiful and I could continue and I've got so much water in here and even with that much water I still have a beautiful color and no I'm not on watercolor paper I'm using just 100 pound cardstock this is not watercolor paper and can you see that I'm able to pull this color and pick that color up and move it I could probably paint my entire panel with what I did on here which was just one dab into my into my pan the colors are amazing and oh so strong so let me let me grab a little so I want to go in here and I want to paint just a little bit and I can pick up my my color and what's nice is that the the fusion brushes lets you load that brush so that you don't have to go back and back and back you're just you've got so much on there that you literally can go in and just start to paint And because this is a waterproof ink from Jacquard, my black is not going to smear. The bristles on these brushes are beautiful. And the fact that I loaded it and I'm still painting, now the color has softened. that's when I can go back and pick up a little bit more and come back in. In fact, I can even go, are you ready? I'm even going to go dip. Do you see just that little, do you see that? I mean, there's like no paint on the tip of that. And I can go back in and look at the intensity and look at how much That's what I'm talking about when I say highly pigmented. A little goes a really long way. In fact, I've got so much on there. That little dip was a lot. And now I'm just going to soften this out. I haven't done that one yet. That's got a lot of paint in there. It's a little bit. So it's more about adding water at this point than anything else. And a little bit of dry brush just to move it around. So when you're talking about a fine art paint, it's really about the light fast, how quickly they fade, that's light fast, how much pigment is in the pot, how much pigment is in the pan, how much paint do you actually need to have from a very intense color. Again, I'm just going to go, I really want you to be able to see this. I'm going to put a little, just a little bit of, of paint on my, just so I have a little water. I'm going to do the smallest little dab. Dab. And I get the strongest of colors from that small little dab. And look at how far I can take it because my brush allows me to do that. So if you wanted to just watercolor, you're going to have an easier time 
with product that has a higher level of pigment base in it. And I want to show that you can just go ahead and let's put a little bit maybe there. I pick up a little bit of yellow. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to pick up. And I have enough yellow. I have enough yellow, maybe, to do all the centers. That was a lot. So less is more. when you're playing with these colors. A little bit more water in there. Load up my brush and go on in. And just let yourself have fun. Be experimental. Don't try to make anything beautiful. Just play with the colors and see what happens when you blend and you mix. Give them the chance to make magic. I'm not an artist. I am not that talented. I am not a fine artist, but playing with fine art quality products makes my life easier because it does most of the work for me. And again, the brushes, the brushes hold so much that I don't have to go back and back and back and back. It just allows you to continue on. And as it fades down, then that's where all the different hues and the different shades come into. And I could come back with a little dink, I mean just a little dink of a color. And if I wanted to add a little bit more of that color in. But it's best to start with less because the colors are so amazingly vibrant. See, they're really, they're really, really strong because of that pigment. And again, this is this is not watercolor paper. I'm just playing with 100 pound paper. It would even be better on watercolor paper. So I wanted to play so you could see. I could add some yellows into here. Right over the top. Kind of warm them up a little bit. But this isn't where we're going with this. But I didn't want you to think that you couldn't just paint with them because you can. We're going to go to the next step. And that involves the gas and paper. So let me pull this out. So this is Japanese washi paper. What does that mean? I'm not 100% sure. It's high quality Japanese art paper. They call it washi paper. There's 20 sheets in each pack. It is by Yasutomo and it was exactly the same story as I told you before. So I got, I got the paint in and I got the brushes in but then I was looking for just the right paper. And I was told about this gas and paper uh, and a few others, there was a couple others. I got three samples of three different types of Japanese paper in. And so I, I jumped on a Zoom call with somebody who is a fine artist and I wanna thank her so much for spending some time with me because all of the paper, they were all white. They were all white. They were all this size. They just had different names on them and they all felt 
kind of similar. But when you added water to each individual paper, the paper behaved differently. It was very much like, um, like a, sque a squishy knock-knock situation with Sizzix, where in the beginning, all of their tools were black and they were all the same size and it was very hard for me to tell you what each tool does because you couldn't discern the difference between them because they were all black. <laughs> so that's how I felt when I got samples of some Japanese paper in. It's like, oh my gosh, they're all white. They all feel kind of the same. And I jumped on this Zoom from somebody who works with Yasutomo who helped me understand a little bit more about them. And when it came right down to it, the Gasson paper was hands down winner, winner, chicken dinner. Never had heard of this paper before. So I call Yasutomo. I want it all. They're like, what do you mean you want it all? I said, didn't we have this conversation about a month ago? <laughs> In the nicest way, I want it all. And they're like, well, it hasn't arrived yet and we only have this much available. I said, okay, I, I'll take it all. They said, we have some open orders for it. I said, okay, after you fill your orders, I'll take it all. I said, when are you getting more in? How about we air freight some over from Japan? Hey, I'll help pay for the air freight. Let's get it here. So they contacted their factory in Japan and, the, and they said, yes, we're producing some more. Yes, there's more to be shipped to the United States. And, and I said, great, let's air freight it. That way there's plenty for everybody. And unfortunately, in the time difference it took from them, for them to tell us that, yes, there was more ready to go on an order and for us to respond back, which let me tell you was less than like 18 hours. They had put it on a ship and it was it was too late to pull it off the ship. So there was no opportunity to air freight the paper over. I'm telling you. So we have what we have. It'll be 90 days before they have any more and that's just the way it is. So you may be able to find gas and paper at some of your favorite uh, fine art retailers. Otherwise, but when you see what it does, it's different than anything else I've ever seen before. All right, down we go again. I know a lot of chatting, chit chat. I like chit chatting with you. It makes me feel like I'm right there with you. <laughs> okay, so gas and paper. This is the only size we have it in. It's not expensive, it's 20 sheets. I wanna say it retails for like $13.50 for 20 sheets and then we have it on sale. So it isn't, it is, nothing here is like super expensive, just super limited. So I've got a few sheets. First I wanna tell you that there's two sides to the paper. Well, yes, I know, there's two sides to every paper. But these two sides feel a little differently. One side has a little, like almost like a little furry texture, and the other side is like perfectly smooth. One side a little bit of, like almost like a suede maybe texture. The other side perfectly smooth. Everything you do with this paper in terms of stamping or uh, stenciling, whatever you're going to do on this, you do on this smooth side. So I'm gonna cut myself a piece. Oh, look at me. Well done, you. This paper loves water. It is not a watercolor paper. Does not behave like a watercolor paper. Does not work like a watercolor paper, but it loves water. Okay. So I've got my smooth side. I'm gonna ink up my stamp. And with my smooth side down, smooth, I don't know, suede -y. 
I'm going to put it down and I'm going to press. Okay, I think we're good. Beautiful. <laughs> I'll put my stamp over here for now. So now I've got my stamped image. Typically, you would think that I would come in and grab my watercolor and dip in and start to paint. Very similar to what we did here. No color through the back, 100 pound paper, just started to play with watercolor. Uh-uh, this is completely different. This is where you have to go with me on this. You have to, you have to just be okay with what I'm going to do and give it its opportunity to be magical. Are you, are you with me? Are you okay with that? Can, can you just put aside all the preconceived ideas of what you should do and let the creativity come through on what you can do. So I'm gonna turn my paper over. And I've got some water, I've got my pans, I've got some stuff going on here. And I'm gonna use my big brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. In fact, I think I might just clean that one out So this is a big brush. Now, watercolor folks know that they use this to make petals for their, their flowers and the smaller ones you can make leaves with. There's tons of things you can do with these beautiful brushes. So let's go in, just keep them bloomed. A little bit of color. And put some in here. And let's start making a little bit of a paint. Now this brush is going to hold a lot. It loads with a ton of product. And then I can just start kind of putting it wherever I want to put it. More water if I need more water. It's all about the water. More water is better than less. Let's go ahead and get it all. And then I think I'm going to do some with the, well, I'll just go ahead and use this since I've got it. I'm going to load up this brush and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to add color. And a little bit of, oh, keep it, keep it a little moist. That way it's easy to have it bloom. Pick up a little bit of color, get some color into my pan, add some water. Kind of really get it mixed because it's in that paintbrush really good. And just start adding some color. If you don't want to cross contaminate, kind of wipe out your brush a little bit. A little more yellow thrown in there. And I'm just going to paint from the back side. And I'm not painting pretty. I'm not painting pretty. You see what I've got going on here, right? It is not pretty. Lots of water. Maybe a little more yellow and I'm just picking it up just a little bit on your paintbrush. Come back in.
and then I might even spray a little bit and watch my color start to move and blend out. So I've got color on here and if I spray, my color will start to bleed into where I've added wetness. Do I think I'm good? Do I want to add a little more? I won't know. I can lift it. I can lift it, but I'm not yet. <laughs> I'm not yet lifting it. Lots of water. Don't be afraid of the water. The paper may on the back side start to um, start to get uh, the little ballies on them. It's okay. And where I've added water, my paint is starting to move. Oh, pick up my pan. That means my pan is too dry. I need to keep my pan nice and the colors nice and wet so they're easy to pick up and they have room time to blossom or bloom. Oh, that was very lot, a lot of color. Add more water or spray and let my water move. Oof, look at that color. and I'm just gonna get the whole thing done. Now, if I wasn't teaching, it wouldn't take this long. And my paper is wet. Like, no kidding, it's wet. But it's meant to hold the water. But it's not watercolor paper. I got a lot on that side. We'll have to see what it looks like when I pull up. It's, these are beautiful. They're beautiful. So much paint coming through. Now I got a lot on this side. I did, without question. I could probably come in and grab some of this and actually paint a whole nother scenery. <laughs> but see, with my big brush, I can just move it. And it's starting to ball up on the back side because I've been working with it so much. But that doesn't change the front. And I can add more color and I can blend more color in to maybe take away some of that really orange Add a little bit more yellow. And when I turn it over, they're just beautiful. And then you have to let it dry. You're like, yeah, I think so. So you can take your heat tool, go in there, and add some heat. That's still wet, but it's not as wet. And the colors are beautiful and they're vibrant and they're just absolutely yummy. And if I come back and I say, oh, I'm still not happy, I can add some more color. I can put some more color down. There's no, there's no right and there's no wrong and there's no making a mistake. And you use so little of the Van Gogh paint and your paper just loves the water. 
I just keep blending and blending until I'm happy. I'm gonna let this one dry. Let's do it again. This time I'll try and be a little softer in my colors. I won't try to use as much water or, or as strong of colors. So I'm gonna ink up. Smooth side down, fuzzy side up. You saw that that ink didn't move with the water, no matter how much water I put on it. My ink didn't smear, it didn't bleed, it just stayed true. That's the Jacquard ink. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go back just a little bit. Grab my large size. Clean it out a little bit. And clean my pans a little bit. That wasn't good. I crossed over. Okay, well, I'm gonna be okay with that. I'm gonna turn this over to my back side. I'm gonna turn this off just so I know where I stopped. Now, can you mist the paper first and then add color? You can, you just have to make sure that the color is pigmented enough. The minute you mist the paper, it starts to go translucent. So if you're going to mist the paper first or color, uh, get the paper wet first, you wanna make sure that you've got enough pigment going on in your, in your watercolor. I really filled that. <laughs> and the more water, well, water is better. If you use too little water, it doesn't come through. You've got to make sure that you've got it nice and wet. So I just keep putting a little more water in my pan, a little more pigment in my pan. And I go. A little more water in my pan. A little more pigment watercolor and I go so I'm trying to keep this one a little softer in my color pick up a little bit put it in mix. In fact, I'm going to add even more water. And go. And you can see my yellow coming through. Let's grab a sheet of white. Look at how beautiful is that. And then I can come back. Well, let me finish my yellow. Let me do the whole thing yellow. And it just, I'm just taking my big brush and it holds so much. And if I want to, I can add a little water and where I add the water, the color will disperse too. 
Now I've used hardly any paint out of that pan because I'm literally just taking it off the top from where it bloomed. And I am not, uh, uh, like I said, I'm not a, a watercolor artist. So this is me just playing. just kind of playing not that there's a right and there's a wrong because there isn't and you never know what you're gonna get oh well that's just you never know what you're gonna get until you turn it over and the good the beautiful thing is that you can add more if you need more But it's easy. It's easy coloring. Oh, that's a lot. That's really pigmented. That's what I did last time, and it was way too strong. I tell you, that's really strong right there. And my paper's starting to ball up, but it's on the back side, so it doesn't affect the top at all. The colors are translucent. And I didn't sit there and think about it. I just kind of laid my color down and let it do its thing. If I want to add more, I lay it back down and I add more color. It's all up to you. Let's put some color over here. Spray that so it kind of spreads out. This is more water than it is anything else. And it's the Van Gogh paints that carry enough pigment that you can afford to add this much water. And I'm going to let it dry. So I could go ahead and grab my heat tool if I don't want to wait too long. My paper is not flimsy. It is not falling apart. It is holding up to the water and the paint. And as I dry it, my colors are staying vibrant. Again, that's all about the level of pigment that is in those watercolor paints. And that's where you see the difference between inexpensive, although these are very inexpensive, inexpensive watercolor paints or, or a lesser quality. They could be more expensive, especially if they come out of sometimes the, the paper crafting industry. Sometimes they're more money and the quality isn't as good. But the higher quality your, your base paint is, the more water it will let you use. And the paper, again, you saw I soaked the paper. It is starting to kind of roll on the back, but it's not affecting my front at all. It feels like silk. It's so smooth. And as it dries, my colors are going to stay beautiful. This gas and paper, no idea what it is. They call it washi paper. I am in hog heaven over the paper. Okay, so I'm going to set this one. Look at this one. Look at that intense color. That's crazy, that color. Same colors. See, I got really heavy with that. Same colors, 
two totally different looks. You decide. I wish the camera could pick up how vibrant these are. People are going to come into the store and they're going to look at these and they're going to say, my gosh, they are not that vivid on camera, but they really are that vivid in color. And I'm just gonna let them hang to dry. So let's move on a little bit. And kind of clean my brush out. And I'm gonna take another piece of my paper. I'm gonna pull a different stamp this time, I think. I'm gonna pull this one. And this one, maybe I'll use both of these. paper cut off a piece and I probably get both of them out of half of it okay this time instead of using black I'm going to use white. I've got my color pad frost white from Jacquard. Again, Jacquard known more as a fine art company, but certainly coming across over to paper crafting and offering their products, not only to the fine artists out there, but we, you know, we paper crafters who just really love good quality product. So I'm going to get this all all inked up in white. This is a pigment-based white. Most whites are a pigment-based white. It's very hard to get a dye-based white to be really, really white. First time I've stamped with this, so I don't know how well we're gonna get because I didn't stamp off, I just went straight to it. So I need my smooth side against my stamp, and here we go. And give a press, and hopefully I didn't move it when I did that. You think we're good? So, so I don't know if you can, if I can get it on an angle, but the white is there. My stamped image is there. Now I'm not going to heat emboss it or anything. I'm going to set this one over to the side. Let's bring this one over. We'll do both of them. I'm going to ink this one up also in white. And I haven't stamped with this one yet either. So. Hopefully my first impression, so far my first impressions have been coming out beautiful. Okay, that should be more than enough. Smooth side, kind of furry or a little rougher side. I'm on the smooth side against the ink. and give a nice press. Okay, I think that's good. And 
around. Oh yeah, if I get it at a right angle, I don't know if you can see it, but if I get it at the right angle, because I can't tell what you can see, I have a tiny little viewfinder, but I can see the white ink. All right, I'm gonna set that over. I'm gonna bring my first one back, which was my music notes. Same thing. Now I could, if I wanted to, take a piece of perhaps paper towel and with my music notes, the ink side facing down, I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna color it. Yeah, that's not gonna work for me. I have this, but I've spilled it twice already. <laughs> not working for me. All right, so I wanna clean my brush really good. And I'm gonna add a little bit to here and maybe a little bit of that green and a little. Now mind you, this isn't all the, I'm just using one palette so far. I mean, I have the other colors here that I haven't even opened up and played with. Maybe I should open them up and just have them handy, just in case I decide I wanna use those two. Hmm. Not enough room for, not enough room for me and everything else. All right, well, I'm just gonna keep it there. I'm gonna get them wet just in case I decide to keep it handy. So I think I will take maybe my, I'll add some yellow. And some water. go get that yellow really good so I've got really good yellow going on I've got a beautiful yellow up here too if I take a little bit of that yellow and mix it in a really beautiful yellow up there too so I've mixed my yellows I want to make sure I've got it on the right I do okay Maybe a little bit of my blue. Oh no, let's do my green. Let's put some water in my top one here. And a little bit of my green. Ooh, look at that green, that's yummy. Maybe throw a little bit more water in there. Really load up my brush and now come in and throw a little bit of that green. And see, my brush is just picking it all up. And my paper is loving the water. I can add a, just a touch of green, just a little bit of green, just a touch if I want to add a little bit more pigment to it. color is this? I've got a, like a teal up here. Is it a teal? I don't know. Let's see. Ooh, that's a, ooh, what color is this one? Ooh, that's a teal. Ooh, see, I'm testing colors. So I'm going to get this one bloom. Ooh, Okay, I love that color, holy smoke. I picked well. Out of 100 colors, I had to narrow it down to just 19, because you get five with the original kit. Oh, that teal is something else. Switch. <laughs> Switch. And I might add some water. 
So where the water hits, my ink is just going to expand on out. See, it's blending into each other. And just let it run and grow and do. Clean my teal. Yellow. Now I'm just picking up my colors and not worrying about my brush because they're all blending into each other anyway. Do I think I want some darker color in here? That darker blue is really pretty. I don't know, should I stop? We have no idea what I've got. What I've got right now is looks like a hot mess on the back. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> okay, kinda looks like a hot mess. How beautiful is that? And my white ink is still white. Oh yeah, baby. I am, I am, look at that teal. Look at that dark blue. I am loving this. Because you just never know what you're going to get. And my white ink is still white. Now, is it wet? Yes, it's wet. Do I need to let it dry? Yes, I need to let it dry. Is my white ink going to come off? No, it is not. Holy smokes, artichokes. That's beautiful. But on the back side, oh, actually, it's not so bad either on the back side, but... <laughs> What do you think? This paper is amazing. Now, see, now you can do something with that if you want. What if I put just a regular piece of paper down underneath it? Ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? That's what I'm gonna do. Let's try it. Just, I'm gonna put this one over to dry because I've got the other one that I did, right? Put this one over to dry. What if I just take a piece of regular cardstock? Let's see what we get with all that bleeds through. So regular cardstock. I've got my gas and paper with my stamped image facing me. I can see it on an angle. It's got to be on a pretty good angle to see it. I don't know if I can get a pretty good angle for you to see it. So I'm going to flip that over. And I love this yellow. So now I'm playing with some of the other colors. And put a little water in there. Kind of spray these so they stay a little wet. Come in here and kind of clean out my little well. Pick up all that color that's in that well. Move it over here. Oh yeah, I love this color. Water, 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 water. Turbo Mister. I'm gonna have to put the Turbo Mister on sale because the Turbo Mister is a great mister. And come 
come in and just add some color. Okay, so I need more yellow if I want more yellow, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of that teal. That teal is so dark. You need so little on your brush to have enough to paint with. Water, water, water. in and I'm just going to start covering all my white surface water 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 a little dab will do you I'm just putting my paintbrush in just I mean just laying it on the top and then bringing it over and mixing it in I'm not like picking up paint I'm not trying to pick up paint I'm just laying my paintbrush on the top of that pan and that's enough I wonder what that green looks like. Psh, 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 psh. That's a pretty green. I think I like my other, I think that might be too dark. Let's go back to my original green. And just a little bit in my pan, a lot of water. So it is a blending set the five pack and you're supposed to be able to make all of these colors out of that blending set. I'm not so good at that. I thought for my, I think they're around $3 and 80 cents. I'd rather just buy my colors. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> I figured they wouldn't make all the colors if they, you know, if they really intended you to blend everything out of a, 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 a pinky, a yellow and a blue with white and black. Man, that's a gorgeous blue. I have no idea what we're going to get. So, you're not a fine artist. You don't necessarily like to color. James would say, SMS guy James, he would say, this is a craft for the ladies who don't necessarily, you know, who don't like to color. A little bit of water and get them to spritz together. Okay. I know it's cheating, right? I'm not supposed to peek. <laughs> The back is beautiful. You could just do this. This is just gorgeous. I mean, I could literally just use this as a background and not have any stamped image on the other side. But what fun would that be? Well, what do you think? Hmm. And then, I suppose, I could. Come in here. Add a little bit of that. And make a background. Why not? Instead of on the paper towel. See, it does not go through paper, but it does go through this, this beautiful, oh, I got a little bit of red in there. Oh, Stacy Park, oh well, from my finger. It does go through this gas and paper, and that's on white. So if I put that there, Oh, see, as it's drying, look at it. It's getting bright and happy. Look at those colors. So what do you think? 
I told you anybody can do this, but we're not done. I'm gonna set these over, over to dry. Cause I still have, I have that one. I have that one. Set these over and let them sit. Oh my gosh, those colors are magnificent. I'm so glad I picked them. <laughs> okay, let's do something else. So we played with stamps. I played with the two in the white. I used this one in the black. Remember, I started all the way a long time ago where we just stamped and we were watercoloring. And then we use the gas and paper and it's beautiful. Let's continue with the gas and paper, but let's change it up a little bit. Clean my brush. This is this it's 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 for me the finest brush I've ever used. <laughs> it really is. And and it's it's affordable. I, I'm still having a hard time wrapping my brain around that, but I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. Okay, so I've got my two palettes. Now I've decided I have to play with both of them. I've got my two palettes. And this time I'm gonna take a stencil. I'm gonna take a stencil. And let's grab some of my gas and paper. I've got a little watermark on there, who cares? I'm gonna take my stencil this one's from Chow Bella. I'm going to tape it down. Got my paper underneath. And now maybe you think I'm gonna grab my paint and come in here and go over the top. Uh-uh, no I am not. I'm going to grab Sizzix paint. So I'm gonna grab the black. And I've got my spouncer. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the black. And I'm gonna put it on my spouncer. It's creamy. It's a lovely acrylic paint. On my finger, but that's okay. Baby wipe. There. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna I'm gonna stencil in black acrylic paint. And because I've taped it down, can you see I'm able to, I'm able to move my spouncer as opposed to just spouncing, I'm able to actually move it along. I need a little more black paint. Add a little bit more black paint. And the Sizzix paint is inexpensive. It's a beautiful quality, but it, it, it's not cost prohibitive. Um, gosh, I want to say it's $5.99. Even the metallics are $5.99, but we had them on a sale. We had them on a, I can't remember, was it Make It Monday that I did them on? A, anyway, we'll keep them on sale. Oh, yeah, it was part of the Sizzix Expedite. There was the three, the three metallics in the one bundle. So we'll just keep them on. And I'm just trying to paint my whole stencil. It's water soluble, so you'll be able to wash your stencil. And I'm just putting little daubs, not, not a lot on. I'd rather add more than put too much on and waste it. So I'd rather keep adding a little bit more than fill up my whole pad and not need what's on it.
And as my pad has more and more paint on it, I now no longer need to go back for more. I've loaded it up enough that I can just go in there and use what's in there. And I'm not trying to get it the same black all the way through. There's some highs and so there's some lows in there. Now this paint dries super fast. So there's my stencil. And the paint dries super fast. I can baby wipe it and clean my stencil right off. And then you're back in business again. I've cleaned this a little bit more, but then you're back in business again. So I'm gonna set that there, because now I'm gonna work with this one. So let's grab, whether I grab a piece of paper or I grab another, um, a, I wanna make sure I got that, yes, it's, this is fuzzy side and smooth side, Whew. or I put a paper towel below it and now I'm gonna wash, rinse, and repeat. So I'm gonna grab some color out of my pans. And the more pigmented your watercolor is, the better this works. And I'm just going to start to throw some color down. Water. I think that's enough yellow. A little bit of a spray, maybe have it move a little bit. And then let's come in, how about with the green? How about this blue-green? So pick up a little bit, put it, oh yeah, I picked up a lot. Put it in the pan. and just start to paint with it. A little more green, my pan. Oh, I hope I don't run out of water. <laughs> do we have water here? Oh, I don't know that we do. <laughs> and let's put some color up here. And I'm, you can see there's no rhyme and there's no reason to how I'm doing my color. And if I wanted to spread out a little bit, I missed it. And then all of a sudden my color starts to spread. No rhyme and reason, I'm just trying to do. And let's go back to that pretty teal. Kind of fill in some of these places. Missed it a little bit if I wanted to spread. And the misting alone will take care of some of the painting for you.
And let's see what I've got. Gosh, I hope I have more water. I'm getting nervous now. <laughs> Wait, is this one water? I think this is water. This one water? Hold on. <laughs> water. Okay, I'm feeling better about myself. <laughs> All right, should we try and see what we've got? I could do this all day long. I could do, see, and very little of the paint came off because it was already dry. And then you've got this. I don't know what we're gonna do with this, but we, we've got it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Almost looks like a butterfly right there, doesn't it? <laughs> but wait, this is the winner, winner chicken dinner. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, yay. Okay, this makes my heart so happy. <sighs> Now you're gonna just let it sit and dry, but it looks like I started with black paper. No, I started with gas and paper. What is this and where has it been all my life? Okay, do you know what this reminds me of? Wait, hello, hello. Okay, do you know what this reminds me of? Okay, when I was a kid. Okay, when I was a kid, I had this, this, this thing. It was this, like this board and it was, it had it was black and you took this pin and it and you wrote with this pin and it made it had all of these rainbow colors underneath it so as you wrote the rainbow colors would come through the black would disappear and these colors would come through hello that is what this reminds me of i have been taken back to my childhood with this it is stunning and i don't know if my camera's gonna get it or not so you all just have to come to scrapbooking made simple we're in we're on solidad canyon road in canyon country california so you can see how amazing this is did you wait for this are you still with me did you leave early you should never leave early no 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 <laughs> Oh, and my black is black. It's not coming off. Is this completely dry? No, but look at my paint is not moving. Thank you, Sizzix. Oh, holy smokes artichokes. Let's do it again. <laughs> okay, put that one over there. Oh my gosh, love, love, love. Um, Let's do it again. With which one? How about this one? Mm, how about this one? Okay, gas and paper. Oh, I got a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Smooth side. Smooth side. Take a piece of regular paper and put it underneath it because you never know what we're going to get. I've got two pieces of gas in there. Well, let me tape it down first, right? Because then I have to paint it and then I have to flip it. Hold on. I get so excited. <laughs> okay, smooth side. Yes, smooth. Y'all think this class is for you. Oh, no. <laughs> this is all about me having a play day. <laughs> Okay, we will not have this paper again for at least 90 days. We will not have the, the, the paint brushes again for at least 90 days, nor will we have the, um, the starter set for the, uh, the, the water color Van Goghs. Okay, so do we wanna do black? No, we did black. Let's do something else. Let's use metallic. Let's use metallic. 
Let's see, color. So I've got the Sizzix Copper. Copper, hello, Copper. Nice to meet you. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. I see I have thoughts. Right in the middle, it's like, hmm, do we stop? Do we change? No, we're just going to go for it. Put my little sponge on better, though. Okay, they call this rose gold. <coughs> they hate it so much when I do that. <laughs> but they love me. <laughs> just not in that moment. <laughs> oh, I got a lot going on. Oh, I got too much. Too much. I'm going to take some of that off and then put some of it back on. Okay. Oh. So why did I say I had too much? Because I don't want it to seep in underneath. Oh, look at that beautiful color. Little dapple, do ya? And I like a spouncer versus using a palette knife for this. Could you use a palette knife? I suppose, sure. My spouncer does just as good of a job and I feel I have a little more control. And I'm a girl who... <laughs> Likes to have a little bit more control. Okay, so I think I've got my rose gold down. And look it, I didn't even go. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to keep my rose gold out. I'm going to do, what is this color? Ooh, agave. Okay, let's try agave, shall we? Empty? Yes, good. I'm going to put a little agave over my rose gold and just kind of vintage it up a little bit maybe never good with one where to put the where to put the accent colors okay and then maybe I'll take a little bit of my rose or rose gold and put a little bit more over my agave I don't want very much to kind of look like it's a patina maybe we'll see what I get time will tell well time is right now because I have to flip it around so put my lids on everything Oh, see, I like it. So it's not all that rose gold. I've got a little distress going on in there, a little vintagey, but that agave is not so bold and so bright because I added a little bit of that rose gold over, uh, over the top of it. Now we bring our paper back and we turn this over. It should be almost dry. <sighs> that was my attempt at drying it. I'm just going to go for it and set it down. Okay, what colors do we want? Um, I think that I think that that blue is wicked good. Um, so let's bring my brush back over. Let's see which blue I like better. Get out my clean it up a little bit. Now that I have no fear that I'm running out of water. <laughs> that would have been horrible. <laughs> I don't have anybody like standing behind me handing me things. It would have, I would have had to say, excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> so 
do we like this blue? Gosh, that's a pretty blue. That blue is a deep blue. I'm using tons of water for this blue. This blue is so, it's the blue that comes in the starter set. It's such a rich blue. I think I'm gonna mist it and kind of let it spread out just a little bit and then I'll come back in and maybe pick up a little bit of that blue. I think they're too close, maybe. Just gonna let it spread. Maybe a little down here. And then what other colors do I like? I don't know, what do we add? Do we add do we add green? A little bit of green in there and make some paint. make it grow as I'm misting it. Oh, it's really dark up here. I really added a lot of blue up there. Yeah, got all that green used. So I'm using the green right down here. This one right here. I'm literally picking up what's in the well and using that. And then letting it do its thing. You think we're good? Too much, not enough. <laughs> I know it's cheating. I shouldn't look. Oh, Stacy, I've got blue all over my fingers and now I've got it all over my paper. Oh, Stacy Park, I am just, uh, see, I'm, okay, you can never, okay, all good. It's all good, I have more paper. I have more paper, it's only paper. Okay, well, let's see, let's pull it off of this one. Pretty right there, beautiful background. That's all you wanna do, it's beautiful. The copper kept the copper, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Look at the colors. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. Well, I'm not gonna do anything with it. The girls are gonna have to make samples out of it, but holy smokes artichokes. I wonder if I took a paper towel and I just kind of pressed a little bit. I 
I wonder if that would push through. Yeah, push through some of the color. Pretty, right? Pretty. I don't know what to do with it, but we'll do something with it. But between this one and that one, I don't know which one I like better, but we're not done. Okay, let's do one more. <laughs> okay. Go back a little bit. Okay. This time let's take, let's take this one. And I got a little blue here. I'm just gonna be okay with it. And I need to stencil first, so I'm gonna tape it down. How about we use white? So we are taking fine art and paper crafting and saying, hey, let's meet in the middle. Let's, let's find a happy home for everybody. There's a place in everybody's crafting for all sorts of different types of products that if you walk into a scrapbook store, you may never ever see gas and paper. But if you walk into a fine art store, you may never ever see color box white pigment based ink or a color pad. Well, it's color box is the original company color pad. Um, waterproof black ink, you may never see how lovely and rich and creamy a Sizzix acrylic paint is. No. Okay, so let's use white. And I've got that empty. Feels empty to me. Let's use white. and the manufacturers don't know what I'm doing with their product. So I don't ask, <laughs> I don't tell, they don't pay me. <laughs> so it's not a, it's not a matter of, of me saying, or them coming to me saying, hey, we want you to show this. It's a matter of me going, gosh, I think I can do this and that with your product. And, but I don't actually tell them what I'm gonna do until I do it. They usually have to watch at the same time. I think that's only fair. Okay, so white, a little harder to make sure you've got it everywhere because I'm on white paper because the gas in is white. It doesn't come in any other paper. Any other color? I did go, yes, okay. I was worried that I didn't do smooth on top. But you know what the beautiful thing of a stencil is? If I don't get it everywhere I need it to be and I add my ink to the back, all I have to do is put my stencil back on top, relayer it up and add more paper, add more color. You think I'm good? A little dab will do you. Better to add a little dab. I've got to be good by now, right? Okay, I'm going for it. Now you all wonder how my fingers get so inky. This is how. <laughs> okay, peel off. We're going to ignore my blue fingerprint over there. Uh, I think 
think I want a little bit more here. I think I want a little bit, I could see it was a little light and I want a little bit more, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And a little bit light here. Yeah, a little bit light. Either that or it's soaking in and I can't see it, which could be the case too. All right, it is what it is, is what it is. I don't know if I can get a an angle on this so that you are able to see that I was able to get my white down. Should be just about dry. Let's bring over a piece of white paper. Cut it in half. Take my stenciled image, flip it over, And let's do different colors this time. Let's do pinks and purples. <gasps> oh my. Let's move this in and let's do, I've got kind of a purpley and a pinky. I don't know what that one is. Okay, that one's purple. I have to clean one of these out because I've only got six. So that one was kind of purpley. Oh, oh, that one's a beautiful purple. Oh yeah. And then this one is gonna be kind of pinky. Let's get my purple off. And maybe I start with that really light kind of pinky. That's how purpley that purple one was. gonna just lay it in and then come over here and put it in my pan put it in my well over there and then add some water and then add some water so I have added so much water I have made it a super super light pink look at how much water can you see how much water is in there Yikes. Okay, I used um, almost that, all that water. So if this was watercolor paper, this would just keep moving and moving and moving. But this paper, it absorbs it. It soaks it in. I'm going to put it back in there. Just I'm just going to lay it in and pick it up. And then come over and put it in my pan. And that's enough, or my little well, and that's enough paint for me to continue. Well, I think that's probably enough. All right, let's go and use some of the purple. No, oh, I want it darker than that. Oh, gosh, that paint. I picked up almost nothing. And look at how dark that color is. I mean, I literally picked up almost no paint on my brush. And it's so pigmented that I can just add tons of water. 
See, I have a really light purple there. And the more water I add, the lighter it will become, the less water, the more saturated it is. Okay, and let's use some of that blue since I have some of that left. And again, no rhyme, no reason. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just, I'm just letting it be. And you have to be okay with that. This isn't about being precise and exact. It's about having fun and letting the colors just be themselves. Could add a little bit of, mist it a little bit and let the colors run a little. Now I'm just picking up the last little leftovers of everything. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay. My white is still white. It's still there. It didn't transfer all onto my paper. I need to, I need to let it dry. But how beautiful is this? Do I want to add some more intense colors? If I do, I flip it around and I come over and I grab a little bit of that blue, which is so intense. And I don't add as much water and I can come in and intensify some of these colors if I want. I don't have to. It's all up to me. But now I've intensified those blues. Oh my gosh. What do you think? I, I absolutely love doing this. I can make background after background after background after background. One thing you can't do with the gas and paper is use a trimmer. The paper has to be completely dry for you to use a trimmer and even then it's a little tough. So a guillotine is a little easier I think. Scissors are great. You cannot try and cut this with a trimmer when it's wet at all. Scissors only. So now Now we've done, and look at, see, as it dries, that metallic comes back, my, my leaves. On the white, well, how about we put it on the black? Ha, you choose. <laughs> These are just beautiful. I don't know how, I, I don't know how this was, I didn't know about this. For like 20 years, I didn't know about this. Our beautiful, these are almost, our beautiful, beautiful. Gosh, I should do one of these in the pinks, right? Should I do one of these in the pinks? Where's my white one? Where'd my white one go? Oh, they're over here. Am I white? Look at that. Okay, maybe I'll do one more. Maybe I'll do one more. How about I do one in the golds? Just because I can, or in the silvers. Oh, how about we use the silvers? But then what color do we use? Silvers, but the teals? Okay, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Let's grab one. Let's lay it down. Oh. All right, well, let's grab another one.
lay it down. I'm going to clean up my, I've got red right there. Boy, oh boy, do I ever. Smooth side. I've got it wet. I'm just going to go for it and we're going to see what happens. And let's pull this one. So it is all about the paper, it's about the brushes, it's about the paints. Hmm. I'm using the scissors, I grabbed the scissors maker's tape. Let's see what we get. And this one I'm going to do in silvers or golds. <laughs> I don't know which one, silvers or golds. Okay. Silver? No. Black? No. Silver. So if you got the Sizzix kit that's going on, um, gosh, it just ended yesterday, or it ended on Thursday. If you got the toolkit to go with the shrink that had the shrinky dinks, you have the silver, the gold, and the copper. And then you can mix in all the other colors. Ooh, that's a lot. What other colors do I have? Oh, that's a pretty color down there. I think I might mix in a little bit of a rose on this one. There we go. I've got plenty on there now. Now that my foam sponge is loaded, I pulled some of this. Ooh, right? And put a little bit over the silver. No, I didn't change sponges. I'm just going to go for it. kind of a little here a little there I don't know it might look horrible you know the beautiful thing is if we don't like it we just put this but denzel right back over when we're done and I can change my color entirely all right so I have my silver going on I kind of have that rosy color going on. Now the one color that, or the colors that don't work well on the back side are the metallics in the Van Gogh. So I added metallics because you may want to use metal. Oh, I guess I could paint with metallics real quick too. I added metallics if you wanted to buy metallics, but the metallics are not going to work well on the back side because you're going to lose that metallic. However, if I wanted to go in and watercolor with them on the top and add some metallics to everything, here they are for you. But the metallics will not look good when I flip this over and try to use them on the back side. You, you'll get a color, but you won't get a... Um, 
you won't get anything that that looks like it's metallic it loses that that luster and that sheen okay so what color we want to go with I should have another one here somewhere I can use the back side of that one what color super dark blue get it blooming just a little bit so now I'm using the super dark blue let me scooch this down right here and I'm just dipping not scooping I'm just laying it in and then putting it over here and then adding my water laying it in, picking up my color, and then adding my water. just a little bit what other color do we want to use I don't know I use that rosy color so I'm not sure what to do hmm it's that rosy kind of color right hmm don't know what I should do maybe I shouldn't have used that rosy kind of color I don't want it Christmassy though no green Should I just keep it all blue? It sounds kind of boring. Well, we'll pull in some of this pink. What's the worst that can happen? We hate it? <laughs> it's only paper. So now I'm using the pink out of the starter set. And letting that color just kind of run. That's on our main street. I expect to hear a fire truck and an ambulance shortly. Wow. Did you guys hear that? Okay, we are on the main street in Canyon Country on Soledad Canyon Road. You don't do that on Soledad Canyon Road. Jiminy Christmas. Yeah, I hear people outside talking about it. <laughs> That was craziness. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because your car goes or your motorcycle goes 200 miles an hour doesn't mean you should. So my paper's starting to bulk because I've added a lot of water. And I don't even bother cleaning my brush between the two because the colors are just blending in. And I'm using up what's left in my well so that I don't have any left. And give it a little spritz so it kind of moves everywhere. I don't know what we're going to get when we see it. <laughs> so... over the top of it hmm yeah see I wasn't so sure about that after I did it I thought I was gonna be like yay but then I was like meh I wonder if I can 
So I haven't cleaned my stencil. It's kind of, I like the silver. The silver looks great. The rose I'm not so sure about. Let's clean some of the rose off. And I think I'm gonna lay it back in and see if I can add some more silver to kind of change it. Yeah, that rose, yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you gotta try sometimes and sometimes it's a winner, winner chicken dinner and sometimes you're like, hmm, <laughs> not so much. All right, I think I probably have enough of the rose off that I can lay it back down. Try and line it back up and that's the beautiful thing of a stencil. I think that's close. And right now, close is good here and in horseshoes. So my silver is here. And my silver spouncer is somewhere here, but we'll just do another one. I'm gonna try and get rid of some of that rose because it's just not speaking to me. Should have gone with my gut and left it in my silver. And I'm just gonna cover that color up. And we'll see, I, I might have just gone too far and lost the whole thing. But you never know until you try. Oh, and there they are. I told you. I hope that he's okay, whoever was on that motorcycle. That does not make my heart happy. Okay, I got rid of some of it. Maybe a little underneath it won't, won't matter. Oh, I'm so much happier. <laughs> I fixed it. Oh yeah, see now I like that a lot. That works, right? Didn't like Kev, the rose was not working for me. But the silver, the silver looks amazing with the pink and the blue. Love, love, love. And then I still have this. I don't know what you're gonna do with that. You're not gonna throw it away. Somebody's gonna make something fabulous out of this, I am sure. So the metallics work like a dream on top. And as they dry, the metallic properties come back into play. Right now that silver is very wet. In fact, I just rubbed some of it off, but that silver is very wet. But my rose gold copper isn't, and the properties have come back into play. And my, oh, that's not good. My black and my white, look amazing. So you would have thought that you stenciled over this with the color, with the purples and the blues and the, the pinks, but I didn't. I stenciled the white paint and colored on the back. I stenciled the black paint and colored on the back. And then we started way back when just playing just playing with the stamps. And the girls have made beautiful, 
beautiful samples using the different stamps. In fact, I have Marianne stamps that I didn't even show you yet. So today was really, really, while we, you can use any stencil that makes your heart happy and you can use any stamp that makes your heart happy. This one's still wet. The main key elements about today are really, oh, picked up my pan, it totally dry. The key elements today really are about the Van Gogh watercolors and that better watercolor, when you start with better product, you end with better results. And these are just so highly pigmented and again, the starter kit comes, starter kit comes with just the bottom five colors. The rest of the wells are empty. And I picked 19 additional colors that I thought made a beautiful palette between them. They're gorgeous. And the metallics are beautiful. I didn't use them today, but I will. They're beautiful. And when you combine those with the new Fusion, watercolor brushes. These are magic. They're magic. And everybody who saw them at the show, everybody who played with them, whether it was uh, another retail store or a manufacturer who was looking at them, everybody stopped and gasped when they saw how beautiful they were and how much they are like a fine Japanese watercolor brush. Now, I could get all the water out of here I could let this just dry and close up. I'm not gonna clean it at all. Nope, not at all. I can bring my, my storage over here and put my brushes in. You've got a few more pockets if you wanted, I don't know, to add a bone folder or something else that you use on a regular basis. And because it's made out of bamboo, I can roll it up and my my paint brushes are going to dry in here they've got ventilation roll it around and then put it down put it down the center and you've got a traditional bamboo carrier for your watercolor brushes we are only selling it like this as the i want it all um, and then the gas and paper, which is just amazing stuff. It's by Yasutomo. The brushes are by Yasutomo. Um, and you just, you just have to love it. I will also tell you with the gas and paper, putting Stacy tape on is not necessarily the easiest thing. You have to be patient for it. We are the type of crafters, we're so used to it that we put it down and then we immediately think we'll just rip it off, but it will pull. You have to see, it will want to pull. You have to be patient with it or use a, use sticky dots with this instead. Use a wet glue instead. The, whatever the fibers are of the paper, of the washi paper, it's not, it does not love Stacy tape. Can you do it? Yes, you can. You just have to be oh so patient and the paper really does need to be dry so see i i just want to rip it off and all that's going to happen is that i'm going to it's going to rip the paper it's not going to it's not going to adhere so you want to be careful using stacy tape with this paper or any double-sided adhesive now i could go back i shouldn't but i could i could go back i've already closed this up and it's time to go i need to show you samples but i could go back and a little bit of water And I'm going to bring that green over. Let's get a little more green in there. Come back in. And maybe add a little bit of green. I might be ruining this. I don't know.
Oh yeah, too much green. See, I should have stayed away from the green. I thought maybe, but I thought wrong. Should have stopped while I was ahead. I'm just trying to dissolve some of that green. Ah. See, Stacy, stop. Tell me to stop. Oh, that's really bright. See, I didn't put any water in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh oh well okay then <laughs> I'm actually okay with it now <laughs> I like the green in there now that I've got the bold bright reds and the yellow okay stop I'm stopping okay I'm taking I'm stopping I am all right you guys so we did a lot today we really did I hope you saw and trusted that that going outside your comfort zone can lead to just the most beautiful things ever. And I didn't do anything that was difficult. I stamped, I stenciled, and then I just smush, smush, smushed on color on the back side of paper. And who knows, you may like the back side more than you like. I mean, like, this is gorgeous. I would use that as a background. It's beautiful on the front side with the white, but it's beautiful on the back side, too. So the, the paper is limited. The palettes are limited. The, the colors, I, I, the, it's a lot limited. And I'm sorry about that. I'm apologizing in advance. Let me show you what's on sale. So first we have the I Want It All for the brushes and this is the only way we're going to sell them and I don't know when I will have more in and you heard the story I bought all they would let me then I have the gas and paper same thing I bought all I could I ponied up I put my money where my mouth was and I still couldn't get very much but I got enough that hopefully most of you will get it if you like it then I got this they had but even that they didn't have a lot of this is brand new, and I think we may be the only place that has them. This is the starter set. So it has those five colors at the bottom, which are white, yellow, kind of that pinky, uh, the beautiful blue, and a black. And then I brought in additional colors to fill the additional seven spaces. But if you wanted more than that, I brought in an empty black one. So this is what the pans look like when you buy them. They're super small. They fit right in the little holes. Here are some of the colors. So here's the metallic. I think this is, this is metallic, this is copper. Here's your light gold. This is olive green. This is yellow, oh my gosh, or O-C-H-R-E. Love that. Here we've got Van Dyke Brown. Here we've got Permanent Red Light. This is Permanent Blue Violet. And these, except for the metallics, these are under $4, and the metallics are a little over 5 This one is Burnt Umber. Well, of course, you have to have Burnt Umber. <laughs> Love this color, too. Sap Green. Permanent Orange. And these are just samples that we made. This is Bronze. Hooker Green. Viridian, 
Ultramarine Deep, Azo Yellow Medium. This is the pearl color. They call it silver, although I don't. This is graphite. Oh, yummy. This is ultramarine deep. This is permanent blue violet. All of these are the colors that I was playing with today. And then these three are the three that come in the set along with the white and the black in the, in the mixing set. So those are all the colors that we're going to have online for you. Okay, so that's how these are sold. One come, the white one comes with just five colors and you fill it with whatever else makes your heart, your heart happy. <laughs> and the black comes empty. And these are Van Gogh watercolors and we get them through Royal Talons. Okay, so I did the gas and paper is limited. The colors are limited. I've got, I've got the stencils that we use today. They're from Chow Bella. Oh, I didn't use that one. I used that one. I used that one. I used that one. I didn't use the music either. I should have grabbed those. All right, so I've got stencils from Chow Bella that are available today. I didn't use the stamp Marianne stamps either but the girls made beautiful samples with them. So I've got the Marianne stamps, and these are just small and lovely little stamps. And you'll see the most beautiful samples from the girls using Marianne, and they're like five bucks each. Really inexpensive and so many uses. And then I have got the stamps from Creative Expressions. I used that one today. I used that one today. I used that one today. Here, I didn't use the wood, but you'll see beautiful samples with that as well. And then the blending, you'll need these. And then the Sizzix paints. So I've got all the colors of the Sizzix paints we'll do, and I want it all, which will include the gold, the silver, and the copper. Otherwise, we'll just list them all open stock and you pick the ones that make your heart happy. I'll tell you, the blacks and the metallics are amazing. That black, to make that wherever it went, to make that, where'd it go? Well, wherever it went, it was amazing. To make that leaf one was beautiful. Love it with the black. It almost looks like black paper. Gosh, I put things away and then I never can find them again. Do you have that problem? It was right here. How far could they have gone, right? I mean, really, how far could, well, I have a sample of it, so you'll see it then. How far could it have gone? I'm right here beats the heck out of me. All right, well, let's talk samples. So all of it's on a YouTube yummy, but the samples are gonna blow your mind. Are you ready? So there's the Creative Expressions stamp with the ink behind it, stamped right on the gas, and everything here was done with the gas and paper. I think everything here was done with the gas and paper. There's that Marianne stamp, just simple. And again, inked, stamped on the front, inked on the back with the gasin. Here's the wood grain, same thing, stamped on the front. It's beautiful, right? Look at that. Here's one of the Marianne's. Just a beautiful little stamp. And then on the gas and paper and inked on the back. Creative expression stamp. Done with gas and on the back. It was inked on the back, colored from the back side. Here's our music notes. Now this was done with the stencil and she used a uh, kind of an orangey yellow from Sizzix to do the to do the stenciling and then did the teal and the kind of the yellowy orange on the back. Let 
look at this one. Isn't that gorgeous? I think I showed this one. This was honorary SMS girl Patty. I showed this one on a Facebook Instagram reel. Okay, here. Done with the agave. Painted all with the agave. No black, agave. Did the mask or the stencil with agave and then came back and colored the back side. All done with the Sizzix paint. Done with the Sizzix paint. A little bit of blue, a little bit of silver, a little bit of uh, lavender going on, and then colored in the back to get those deep, rich, dark tones coming through. Oh! They actually used a gel press for this one and Sizzix paint. So they stenciled this on paper, but they did this. Oh my gosh, they did this on the Gasson with the Sizzix paint and then the Van Gogh watercolors behind it. And here you have the Sizzix rose gold for your music notes with the stencil from Chow Bella, flipped it over and added the Van Gogh paint on the back side. And you just let it go. You just let it go. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. So stamped with the Creative Expressions stamp with the Color Pad Waterproof Black Ink flipped over and just threw color down. Nothing blends. I mean, it doesn't smear. It doesn't get all over. It preserves the stamp, preserves the image, and lets you just have so much fun. Wait, we're not done. How beautiful is that? Again, stamped, flipped over, yeah, I've got it right. And here, stamped, flipped over. Is that gorgeous? So all watercolor paints are not the same. Okay, this, this was a, this was done with the Sizzix paints. With the acrylics, it was done with the stencil. It's very manly grungy. Can you see the, you can barely make out the stencil in there. Ah, oh, yeah, it's good, right? <laughs> and again, here. Done with the Sizzix paint. Now that's not the silver, that's actually the black and the purple mixed, and she made a gray out of it. And then colored the back. And here, with the Sizzix paint, the Chow Bella stencil, and the gas and paper, and the Van Gogh watercolor on the back side. All of these were painted on the back side. Yay. This was not black paper. This was the white gas and paper that I actually did this one and painted it black. Did the stencil in the black Sizzix paint, flipped it over and came back with that beautiful watercolor. Can't do it with all kinds of paper because it doesn't, it doesn't bleed through. This is washi paper. Oh, these are the Marianne stamps. This was done with a gel press and the stamp. That's another time. <laughs> this is the Creative Expression stamp, the Sizzix black paint, gel press, Van Gogh, watercolor on the backside of gas and paper. Oh my gosh. Look at here. So 
This is the backside of that. <laughs> to show you the difference, this is the backside of this one. And then last but not least, here it is. Okay, so they were working on the sample. SMS girl Katie, honorary SMS girl Katie, started it. And she was hand coloring in these flowers with on the back side of the gas and paper. Then SMS girl Doris stopped by to drop off some samples and she started working on some things because she wanted to play. And Claire's like, let's do lunch, come play for a little while. In the meantime, SMS girl Renee started to play a little bit and she wanted to know how to use everything. And I said, well, I need to show you. So I need to grab some of the paper, but I couldn't find any of the gas and paper just like this. So what did I see? I saw like a half painted, a half painted panel and I thought that they were done making samples. So I grabbed the half painted panel panel, and I turned it over and I'm showing Renee how to use it. And Doris is starting to put the card together and she's looking for this piece and it didn't look like this. It was almost all negative space with just a little bit of coloring in with the watercolor on the back side. And she's like, where's my, where's my, 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 my panel. And I'm like, I don't know. She's like, well, it's got to be here. So they're looking for it. And the next thing I hear is Stacy, did you use to show Renee the one that had almost all open space and was just very gently painted in? And I said, yes. And I threw it in the trash. Oh man. <laughs> Sorry, Doris. Doris has told me I have a pile. If a pile is here, it is my pile. Do not touch it. I now know I stand corrected, but she did a beautiful job. She went in and, and because she could add more to the back, she added more purple and she just made it beautiful. Yay. This was, this was Katie and me and Doris and Renee might have even thrown some color because I was just trying to show her how to use everything. Okay, you guys. Oh my gosh. So we stepped out of the box. We stepped way out of the box. We don't even believe there's a box. What box? <laughs> We don't need a stinking box. <laughs> well, maybe to step on to reach the high, high shelves in the stores. <laughs> I hope that you found this interesting. I hope you found it not intimidating. I hope you saw that I didn't do anything you can't do, even if this is the first time you're picking up ink and paint. Put me on grab your paper, grab your ink and paint. Let's do it together. All you do at the same time I do. I roll the, I, I spounce my, my, my ink on my stencil. You spounce your ink on your stencil. I flip my paper over. You flip your paper over. It is all about using quality products that you might not know about because it's outside of what we assume is our hobby. Let's get the fine art people together and let's get the crafters together and let's make beautiful things together, especially if we're able to bring it to you at a price that is more affordable. So where are you going to find all of this stuff? Well, <laughs> you're going to find it in limited quantities at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. You may be able to find the gas in at some of your local fine art stores because there were pre-orders and they did ship it. I know that some of the paint brushes went out because I, I didn't take every last one of them. I took a lot of them, but I didn't take every last one of them. So you may be able to find the fusion. They're fusion brushes by, it's fusion, right? I want to make sure I've got that right. Um, I want to make sure I've got it right. Yes, Fusion Brushes by Yasutomo. The Gas and Paper is by Yasutomo. The Van Gogh watercolors are beautiful. And Royal Talons carries them. And they're affordable and they're lovely and they are from the fine art world and they are just superior quality. The stencils and the stamps, well, those are Chow Bella and Creative Expressions and Marianne. So you can shop all over for those. And of course, if you have a favorite retailer, independent retailer, go see them first. I bet they have the Creative Expressions stamps and they might even have the Chow Bella stencils. Who knows? So support your local independent. Again, I hope that, I hope this wasn't too far, too far away from what everybody, no, I'm glad if it's too far, I'm glad it's too far away. It's time we spread these wings, right? Absolutely. Okay, you guys, it's me, Stacy, scrapbooking made simple, scrapbooking made simple.com. Just wanting to be your cheerleader and say, you can do this.
You can. We'll do it together. All right, you guys, I will see you on Monday for our next Make It Monday event. Have no idea. Oh, yes, I do. I know exactly what it is. <laughs> I'll see you Monday, 5 p.m. Sunny California time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel when we live chat during our next Make It Monday where I have a value. It's a, close to $100, I think, for $19.99. One bundle and that's it. One value, $19.99, $100 retail. Yeah, that's a good deal. All right, you guys, I'll see you then. And thank you. Thank you for letting me be me. I appreciate it. Toodles, everybody.